Hi everybody! Hi Noga! Hi Gil! So welcome to another psychoanalyzing video. Today we wanna psychoanalyze Brienne of Tarth, a woman extraordinary in a man's world. So the highlight of episode 2 of season 8 was Brienne finally getting what she wanted all along. Not so much to be a knight, but to be one of the guys. So Brienne of Tarth! Knight of the Seven Kingdoms. But first, let's go back and review her traumas and what made her who she is. And she has been through a whole lot of things that have made her who she is. Brienne's character has been, has been through a lot of rejections. She's mm -hmm. considered an unattractive woman in Westerosi standards. And right. uh, um, this is very problematic in the Westerosi world since uh, women are uh, required to be attractive in order right. to attract... Uh, right. Only in the West Rossi world. In of other course, world, of, of course, course, it's not important anymore. It's a historical thing. Exactly. But it's interesting historically-wise because... Uh, <laughs> yes, yes. It, it just shows how long, uh, you yeah, know, how, how far, how we've, far gone. we've gone. Exactly. Yes. Uh, in the show, she's portrayed by uh, Gwendolyn Christie, who is mm. a very attractive woman, so mm. it can be a bit confusing. But in right. the books, she's uh, described... Right, right, right. In the books, if you take in all the ways that she describes, is tall, Muscular, flat-chested, brittle straw-colored hair, coarse features, freckles, whatever. Teeth crooked, her mouth is wide, lips swollen, and her nose has been broken more than once. But she has large, beautiful eyes. So because of the way she looks, it's as if she failed as a woman. Uh, because being a woman means you have to be right. pretty. Is that a woman? But, right, uh, that's your social role. Exactly, that's the social role in uh, Westerosi standards. And, uh, not today. Not today, no, no. No, we're only talking about back then. It's not uh, thank it's God, irrelevant thank God. these days. How uh, weird it must have been to live in that kind of world. I can't mm -hmm. even yeah. imagine it. It's so hard, but we'll try to. <laughs> we'll try. We're, we're going to try really hard <laughs> to, to understand what they're talking about, uh, okay. even though it's so far from... So uh, foreign from what we know. Exactly. Okay. We all want to be attractive in one way or another because we have this kind of notion that if we're attractive enough, mm -hmm. then people won't leave us and they won't reject us. Right. Not yeah. only attractive physically, just attractive in all kinds of ways. All kinds of ways, yes. exactly. You can have uh, intelligence or humor or uh, uh, strength or talent or whatever. Right. But she is attractive in the sense that people are drawn to her because of other qualities okay. that she has. And these qualities are her strength and her uh, fighting skill. The people in the, sh in the series, they want to be around her because of those qualities. A great beast of a woman. I came to Winterfell because I'm not the fighter I used to be. But I'd be honored to serve under your command if you'll have me. Right. This is what attracts them to her. Right. So, so she's good at guy things and right. she's not good at girl things. Mm -hmm. And there are stories in the books that she tried to be more womanly and she wore a dress and all kinds of stuff and then she was ridiculed for that, so that must have been painful. Like It's also a personal inclination, but it could also be because she never had a female role model. We don't know much about her mother, but we do know that we gr she grew up without one. Yeah, she died young. So she didn't get uh, the motherly support that she could have gotten had things gone a different way. Right. That, that's gonna hurt. Yeah. Thank you for this great insight. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so after her, her brothers died, she became like the de facto heir of, uh, of her house, of her dad. So that's again a confusion, a gender confusion, like a woman heir, a woman that's good at guy things. And he tried, her dad tried to marry her off. That didn't work out uh, very well. Like the first one, the minute he saw her, he said, uh, no, 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 just like uh, I'm reneging out of the deal. Right. And uh, in order to continue her father's lineage, she has to marry someone and have uh, kids. Right. So uh, even it's though... It's important they, for politics. It's important for politics. It's important uh, just, yeah, existing in the world. Right. As a, so, as a uh, tarth. As a tarth. But uh, she can do it. And so her father's lineage is broken because no brothers to, uh, right, to keep it on. Right. Mostly what's important is your lineage. But here it's probably so horrible for them mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that it's not worth the political benefits. Right. You don't marry for love. Right. And you can have sex with other people. Right. You just need to get them pregnant. Right. But that was uh, too much for him, much to, handle. For him right, to handle. Right. And then the next guy, the, came uh, another fiancé, and he told her in advance, 
I'll marry you. But once you're married, you, you have, you'll have to act as a quiet, little, obedient woman, be in the kitchen, whatever, look womanly, do lady stuff. And she was like, um, okay, I'll do that if you can beat me in a swords fight. And then she kicked his ass. <laughs> and very surprisingly, he didn't want to marry her after, even though she showed him that she was good at something that is important. Why wouldn't a guy want to marry a girl that is better than him at fighting? Can you understand that? It sounds, it sounds so weird because uh, today people like strong women, rich women, uh, accomplished women. Guys just uh, fall for that stuff. Right. I mean, uh, you're, you're trying to dominate me. And if you beat me, then I will be submissive. Right. But this is my only chance of not being submissive and right. like dominating you. Physically. Physically dominating you. Yeah, most guys prefer a woman to be more uh, intelligent than and him. wealthy. Yeah, and, more richer uh, than him. Richer, yeah. yeah. yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, back in the day... Back in the day. So glad we passed that. <laughs> so happy about that. Unfortunately, many of the people who are talking about things like gender differences, they have no idea what they're talking about. They don't know the literature. They don't know there is a literature. They don't understand biology, like the, the social constructionist types, the women's studies types, the neo-Marxists, they don't give a damn about biology. It's like they inhabit some disembodied universe. <coughs> right. Are you okay? Yes. You want to have a drink? Is this like a gender thing that you're offering me? <laughs> <laughs> it's trying to make a correction. <laughs> <laughs> you can't win with women. You can't win with them. Uh, you couldn't win with women. Now everything is fine, right? Everything is fine? Everything is great it's now. Great, great. Okay. Am I doing okay? You're doing very well. Yes. Yes. I've been sitting in a muddy pen, wrapped in chains for the past year. And I'm a woman. I'm still beating you. You were not beating me. She was also sexually assaulted, almost raped, and uh, left for dead in a ring with a bear, but... Minor stuff. <laughs> Minor stuff. Okay. <laughs> <coughs> okay, so what's the result of all these gender-related traumas? She has masculine traits, right? Mm -hmm. And then she kind of becomes like a man in some sorts, right? She adopts like a man's identity or a man's uh, thinking. Do you yeah. agree? She, she adopts the gender role of a man. She is the protector. She is the one who's willing to sacrifice herself. Traditionally, men are required to sacrifice themselves for the greater good, for their country, wow. for their family. And women are required to sacrifice themselves for the, the like baby. the baby right. and the, the children. Right. And she's also very strict. She's like Ned. I gave my word. That's the most important thing. Like very honorable. Yeah. Uh, being honorable is also a masculine uh, role. Where did you find this beast? She is a truer knight than you will ever be. Being honorable is different from respect in the sense that uh, when you're a man of honor, then you honor like your role in society right. and uh, respect is about you. It's not about society, it's about the admiration that people hold right. for you. So she's also, she's not respected, but she's honorable. Right. And she gave up respect. I mean, she's right. not... Uh, and you can say uh, about someone that, that he's an honorable man, but an honorable woman... It sounds a little off, yeah, right? Yeah, it sounds a little off. And also, like, she's not uh, being uh, motherly uh, towards uh, uh, Podrick. He's there to help her. And she's being, like, uh, whatever, like a man in the army, in the military, like, teasing him all the time. Mm -hmm. Didn't they teach you how to ride a horse? And also, you can say that maybe she doesn't feel that she's worthy to have a squire, because if she were a man with these fighting abilities, then, of course, she should have a squire. But when they give her the squares, they say, no, no, I don't need anyone. Maybe subconsciously, unconsciously, she thinks I'm not good enough to have a man squire after me. That's uh, so she's like internalizing uh, the oppression. You're not the knight. Women can't be knights. Why not? Tradition. So she's nonconformist because she doesn't uh, choose to uh, stick to her gender role in any right. price. And, uh, right. Fuck it. Uh, fuck it, exactly. She, she has masculine, uh, what is considered masculine uh, right. traits. So she'll go yeah. with it. I mean, what and, are you uh, going to do about exactly, it? Exactly. And everyone else will, uh, uh, will uh, yeah. catch Adapt. up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, whatever. It's your problem. Right. But she's also very much a conformist. 
in the okay. same uh, how can that be yes. two things <laughs> at the same time incredible because uh, she really supports the patriarchal social order in the sense that uh, uh, she supports the power structure in society right she doesn't say oh mm. no more kings and queens and whatever and uh, right. an army and this and that right. she she joins with it like she's right. uh, she she becomes right. the honorable soldier right. you know, and uh, right. the protector and uh, so so she didn't say those gender roles are stupid let's change the roles she uh -huh. said no i don't want this role i want that role yes so it doesn't really inherently threaten the social structure it threatens it to some degree mm -hmm. but on the other hand it just like, even reinforces it exactly it reinforces it because it presents it as the desirable structure like this right. is what we all desire both men and women this is what we desire to have these wars to have uh, this kind of like a uh, uh, hierarchy right one could say that the first step towards changing the social structure is by showing that the rigid uh, groups and roles should not be rigid that a woman can do a man's thing because folk tradition here she's showing to the people around her look the roles can switch and then the second wave of feminism and third wave whatever are maybe we can do away with these roles but maybe it's too early you can't change everything all at once, that's not how it works. And it could also be that uh, at the end, when she tells, at the end of the seventh season, when she tells Jamie, fuck, fuck loyalty. Fuck loyalty. Uh, then it's uh, one of the switches that she's starting to make uh, with the social order, okay. because joining together the houses and everyone to fight uh, the, right, the White Walkers. Right, right. Is this goes beyond houses and honor and oaths. She wants to be a knight. She wants to be a knight or not. To be accepted into the clique into the group. To be recognized as the talented warrior that she is. Mm -hmm. To be recognized by the people who count, and the, the, those are the other knights. Even though she's a great fighter, she won in the tournament uh, for, for King Renly to become the King's Guard, mm -hmm. even though she beat everybody. You may ask anything of me you desire. It is within my power, it is yours. Your grace. I ask the honor of a place in your king's guard. So basically the world back then was not fair. Right. Incredible stuff. <laughs> Incredible stuff. <laughs> because, okay, you're saying that, the mo that, that, that men are more important than women because men are stronger. Also, they're stronger, they're more powerful, whatever. But it, if she's stronger than the men, then okay, no, let's think about something else. Then we have to find a different reason why you mm -hmm, can't uh, mm -hmm. right. you can join us. A different uh, discrimination. Right. Let's just uh, change the rules a little bit. Like she's like a dog. Like she was with Renly, starry eyes, and the moment Renly died, she's like, Caitlin, okay, I'm gonna latch on to you. I do not know your son, my lady, but I could serve you if you would have me. Yeah, she's like looking for an owner, like to find an identity. Like, what can she do by herself? Like, she's gonna be out of a job? No, come on. We can see Brienne's search. Uh, as a search for the mother, some th someone big and strong that can take her uh, under their wing and give her, uh, give her a house, give her a sense of belonging, mm. because we all need belonging for our uh, well-being. Right. You have courage, not battle courage perhaps, but I don't know, a woman's kind of courage. So even though it's a, it, it could be a man, it's like a mother in the psychological right. sense. Then I am yours, my lady. I vow that you shall always have a place in my home. Because she was rejected all her life, she really needs those signs of kindness from other people. And those signs are like signals for her that those people can be trusted and she clings on to them. Uh, so, right, uh, right. With Renly, there was a story in the books that she came to Tarth to visit. He was kind to her and then she was like, I'm going to fight. I'm going to dedicate my life to fight for this guy because I met him for two minutes and he was kind. And also Jamie, the moment he started to be nice to her, right. that also then she fell in love with him. And they're both uh, out of her league, also in their appearance and in their political and social stature. Mm -hmm. So what does that tell you about her, that she's chasing men she can't have? Also, there is a tiny problem that one of them is gay and the other one is in love with his sister. So that also could be a barrier. It yeah. could mean several things. It could mean that maybe she's not really looking for a relationship. I think that the scene with Jamie in the bathtub really expanded her way of thinking about what it means to be honorable. Tell me if you're precious, Randy. 
commanded you to kill your own father and stand by while thousands of men, women and children burned alive, would you have done it? Would you have kept your oath then? We really saw that things are a bit more right. grey, they're right. relative, they're right. not uh, relativistic, they're not... Uh, Right, there's a flaw in the system because this guy did the right thing and right. it was dishonorable. Okay. Right. okay, so let's take her to therapy. Let's let her lie on the, on the couch in a non-sexual way because we don't want her to feel uncomfortable. So how would you <laughs> help her? It's very... Uh, I know. Okay, yeah. You learned something. <laughs> very good at it. So, so basically, how would you treat her in order to help her deal better with all those traumas. Brienne's issues, they don't only stem from like her personal trauma mm -hmm. and uh, her past, they also stem from the, the uh, social order that influences the psychic structure of the subjects that work and uh, live inside right. that social order. Right, she can't escape it. The theorist that fits, I think, Brienne's situation uh, most mm -hmm. is the Jessica Benjamin. She wrote her first book, it's called The Bonds of Love. Benjamin uh, claims that women are much more prone to idealizing their loved ones and okay. obsessing about uh, their loved ones okay. and uh, really giving them a lot more emphasis. And she claims that it's because women ideally love people that uh, they wish to be but can't because the social order doesn't allow them to become. So by loving them and merging with them, it's as if they gain some of their qualities, of their desired qualities. Men and women uh, are disempowered and empowered if only if they suit their gender roles. I thought the Night's Watch might make a man of you. Something resembling a man at least. To manage to stay soft and fat. Your nose buried in books. Right, who would want a friend who is kind and smart? That's yeah, it. or a husband who is loving and wants to take care of the children. And uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. And, uh, and the contrary, right? right. So it's, uh, there's a kind of like hypocrisy here. And, uh, that we hurts can, both sides. That hurts both sides, exactly, right. because we can't choose. We don't have like a, a very broad spectrum that we can... Uh, right. There was one time in our life, one period in our life, in the infancy and childhood, where we can feel completely protected and looked after and have this kind of sense of, uh, you know, nice, warm belonging I, and... Uh, I've read about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if we don't have it, then it won't come back the, in the intensity when... No. Yeah. It can't. It can't, exactly. It can come back in other ways, mature ways. We also have, you know, sides of ourselves that are still infants in some way. Okay. But it can never come back in the same kind of manner which was supposed to be then, but mm. never was. So how can you overcome that? So first of all, you need to legitimize the need, grieve over it, you know, mourn over it, and uh, carry it with us in, in a way right. that allows us to move forward and enjoy what we can get from other people as mature people. Right, so, not, so don't deny it. Mm -hmm. don't, don't think about it every waking hour. Right. Accept it, be sad about it, but and also take it with you as you move on. Right. And maybe she'll be able to have uh, an intimate relationship, you know, not necessarily sexually, but like an emotionally intimate relationship right. with someone else and, and not be afraid from it or not cling to it like okay. very fiercely. Do you think she will be with Jamie by the end? I don't think so. I don't think that Jamie will be with anyone but Cersei. And I think that maybe she will be with Termond because uh, he's the only man who ever showed real interest in her. Romantic. Yeah, romantic, exactly. Okay, so let's wrap it up. Thank you, Noga. And, and also I would like to thank our patrons. Thank you, patrons, for supporting the channel, supporting the work. Without you, that wouldn't be possible. Some of our sponsors are here. And we'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching. Bye, everybody. Bye. So I wanted to let you know about the Thrones effect. How Game of Thrones Conquered Pop Culture. This is the definitive book about the Game of Thrones phenomenon. It's a collaborative book with seven other YouTubers and two other God Academy collaborators. And we take a bird's eye view about what Game of Thrones means from all kinds of angles and what has made it so successful. 
Is it the psychoanalytical angle, the way that we empathize with the characters? Is it the historical political angle? Is it so good because of the inspirations that preceded A Song of Ice and Fire and Game of Thrones? Is it the fact that it allows us to escape to a different world from all our trials and tribulations? Is it that it allows us to connect to other like-minded people from all over the world? Is it the characters that we can interpret so differently? Is it the fact that it deconstructs fantasy and creates a whole new genre? All of this and more is discussed in the Thrones effect. So if you want to get the ebook version, boom, the link is in the description. The audiobook and print edition hard copy coming soon. It's a very enjoyable read. Each chapter takes you to a whole different point of view. Each chapter has its own point of view, reminds you of something? Book is below in the description. Enjoy!